Hello and welcome to the OpenMRS Video Spotlight. Today we're here with Elliot Williams, OpenMRS Community Infrastructure Intern. I first heard of Elliot when he was kind of in the background of the developer meetings. And you wouldn't hear a, a direct reference to Elliot, but you'd often hear him pipe up and answer a question around community infrastructure. So I began asking a few people in the community, who is this mysterious Elliot? And the, the answer I got was quite surprising. He is our, our very own OpenMRS boy genius, as referred to by Burke. And we're sitting down with him today to answer a few questions. So Elliot, tell me, when did you first hear about OpenMRS? I, I can't say it's a dateable event, but I know somewhere along, I've known Burke for a long time, because he's been connected with my mom, who's a researcher neurologist who's been with Regan's group in the past. And, I mean, I think I probably first heard about OpenMRS three or four years ago, and I've always kind of felt like open source stuff is very cool, and I think I've understood the importance of, you know, having open source software out there for a while. So. I mean, I heard about it a few years ago, but I was immediately like, wow, that's a really cool idea. What was the first open source product you ever used? Oh, man. It was probably, you know, some distro of Linux that I, at the time, had no idea was open source. But it was free, and so I could mess around with it. First thing I can think of. So, how did you get connected with the OpenMRS team. How did you get the position as the summer intern? Um, I mean, once again, it's just comes from Burke knowing me for a long time. And he knew that I was looking for some work and I would love to do something related to the, the technological field as opposed to your normal teenage job of working a drive through or something like that. So um, he basically said, you know, we think we could find a place for you with OpenMRS. And it kind of went straight forward from there. And let's be clear, this wasn't your first summer working in OpenMRS. No, this has been my second summer. I was there for probably about two months last year. So this, but this has been my first kind of full summer with OpenMRS. Neat. So what's it like working with the core team in Indianapolis? It's definitely, it's a very cool environment, especially having, you know, just being around lots of, you know, lots of people at least 15 years older than me, but they're all very great people, and, you know, I'm, for it's the first time for me really being in an environment of programming, so it's a very, it was a really, it's been a really neat experience, and they've all been, treated me really nicely, and it's been great. Have you got a chance to beat any of the other implementers? Not, not so much. I mean, I, the, the majority of implementers I'd, be, I'd just be hearing about because they'd be interacting with someone else. I mean, I've kind of been, I don't do, I have not done a lot of interaction with implementers. I've, you know, been stayed in these past couple years much more kind of on the back end, working on things at the back end, whereas, you know, from an infrastructure standpoint, it'd be someone like Michael who's, you know, going out and talking to people and, since I can't exactly drop out of school for a couple weeks and fly down to the implementers meeting, there's not not a whole lot that I can do to meet people, but I would love to kind of see a few actual instances where OpenMS is deployed. So tell me what you've been up to this summer. So this summer, I guess when I started this summer in June, um, I've essentially been working on one big grand project, which was moving the OpenMRS ID system over to an LDAP server. They, uh, before it was running off of Atlassian Crowd, which is a proprietary user management system. So that's where all the, uh, the user accounts in the OpenMRS community were kept. And what we've done is move them to an open LDAP server, which hasn't done a whole lot right now. Um, but basically what it's done is opened up limitless possibilities for people's OpenMRS community IDs. Um, so it's definitely been very cool. It was a big undertaking to kind of basically grab a brand new server that no one in, at the OpenMRS core team had any real experience with and 
just figure out how to make it work for us. Um, from there, we launched OpenMRS Answers about a few weeks ago, and that was the first, that's been our first real example of what having this LDAP system is enabling us to connect OpenMRS ID to. Um, and then in addition to that, along with that, um, I wrote my own uh, piece of software, the OpenMRS ID dashboard, which anyone in the community has walked through at least once and reset their password after the switchover. Um, and that was something that I wrote from the ground up just to kind of manage our user interface, our user account management exactly the way we want to. And as we go and do more integrations like the mailing list transition, which is supposedly going to happen sometime within the next few months or as soon as Google gets around to updating their groups interface, that'll be the kind of things that get integrated into the ID dashboard that I wrote. And so that was, that was the last step of kind of this big user user base um, transition from crowd to LDAP. So if I understand correctly, there was a few services that could integrate with the crowd ID system, but now that we've got the open LDAP server, most every service, like Answers, can integrate and use that for authentication. Yeah, so basically, with a couple exceptions, in the past, it was only the Atlassian services, so that's the Wiki and Jira issue tracker. And, um, those uh, those services were the only ones that could integrate with that core ID. Um, it was all tied into the Atlassian kind of walled garden. Um, but now with the LDAP server, yeah, it'll be things like OpenMRS answers and really anything, any service that we'd like to add in as part of as a community tool, we can almost 100% of the time tie it in with an OpenMRS ID. So you talked about the mailing list. Any other community tools that are on the horizon that you can tell us about? Um, I don't know how much I'm supposed to reveal because when that commits us to getting something, but there's the mailing list. Um, we've definitely been looking at moving the module repository into what's called Zamboni, which is an open source version of Mozilla add-ons for Firefox. And so we've been definitely looking at moving to a better platform for that, which would, I mean, I am not writing and using modules day to day, but it would definitely be great, I think, to see an improved module repository with, you know, ratings and reviews. And as we get more modules in the community, I think it would be really great to see that. So that's something that I can say will probably be coming in the near future. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. So do you have any plans to stay involved during the school year? I definitely, I'm trying to stay involved as much as I can. I mean. I, sh I should qualify that, that uh, you probably can't tell to look at him, but Elliot is still in high school, right? Yeah. And um, so he's, my... he's just, just left the Open MRS group to return back to courses for the fall. Yeah, so that was, you know, I left maybe two weeks ago, and I've been in high school for about a week now. And I definitely, in terms of staying involved with Open MRS, I want to do... I want to do as much as I can. I mean, I kind of went on a full hiatus this, the year before, and I'd like to try to stay involved a little bit more. I mean, it's difficult because it's very hard for me to actually come in and, you know, be there during a normal work day to so meet with the core team. But I'm definitely doing what I can to keep on top of what I'm doing in high school and then um, to be able to have some time to work with the community as well. Have you thought about a Summer of Code project, a Google Summer of Code project in the future? Um, I think that's definitely a possibility. I have not put too much thought into it, but I, I would love to get involved with Summer of Code, and I think that would be, that'd be really cool. And as soon as I'm old enough to be eligible, I'd love to try to jump into that, since essentially all the, all the building blocks are in place with OpenMRS's involvement with Summer of Code. So, what kind of career path are you on? You're involved with OpenMRS, a nonprofit, programming. Where are you going? I mean, I can't say I've got a definite answer yet, but I think what I'm certainly interested in is um, definitely some kind of. I wouldn't go so far to say as just becoming a full-on programmer because I think that would get a little old with me after a while. But I'm really looking into exploring what I can do with uh, some little more creative technological fields. So I, I'd love to try to go into UI design or human-computer interaction or 
any sort. I'm, I'm really interested in the user interfacing type design work, and I'd love to try to go into that, but I can't say I've got a definite idea yet. Well, and I can see that, having looked at your, your OpenMRS ID interface. It was, it was nicely laid out and well done. Well, thanks. Yeah. In fact, I was looking at it and I was thinking, this doesn't look typical. Where did this come from? <laughs> Yeah, and that's definitely, I've heard a couple of comments to that regard, and that's another place that I'm planning to extend, is I'd like to try to just fully open source that dashboard and, you know, put it out on GitHub or somewhere like that, where I could, you know, if anyone else wants to try using something like that, I'd be happy to open it up to them. What's your best subject in school? Oh, I mean, it's got to be a math science type thing. I'm, I'm good at those. I really enjoy... Uh, concert band as well. I played, the, I played the clarinet for four or five years. And so that's been, that's what I really enjoyed. But I'm a, I mean, I'm a traditional math science geek, I guess, when it comes down to that. <laughs> so any advice for students who want to get a cool internship at a nonprofit? I mean, I don't know exactly what I can say to that regard. But I think what I've definitely noticed is, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter so much that you know, I, I, I don't think for any student trying to get involved with something like this that I don't think they should worry so much about having a full portfolio. When I, I mean, when I went on two years ago when I started work being, working as a summer intern um, in Indianapolis with OpenMRS, I mean, I had very, very little, you know, experience that I could put on paper. I mean, I didn't really have any programming languages nailed down or, you know, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot that I could do, but I think it was more just, obviously, me knowing Burke, and Burke, I guess, believed in me, so that uh, that went well. But I think for any other students, a lot of, you know, just try to, don't worry so much about trying to say, oh, here's a bunch of stuff that I've done and why you should need me. Because I don't, I mean, it, there's no way that anyone my age could match up a portfolio to, you know, professional. All right. Thanks very much, Elliot. All right. Thank you. Good luck with your studies this year, and I'm sure we'll be uh, talking again in the future. All right. Thanks so much.